Hello and welcome to another episode of Electric Moments. And this time we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about charging an electric car, but we're afraid to ask. Now, it's the one thing that comes up more than any other. If I buy an electric car, where and how am I going to charge it? And naturally, you know, sometimes people feel a bit embarrassed to ask about that. And I confess, when I first started driving an electric car, I didn't know what to do. I hadn't got a clue. But seriously, if I can figure it out, Maddie, you know anyone can. <laughs> you always say that. So in our experience, sometimes it's less of a case of range anxiety and more a case of change anxiety, just everything feeling a little bit different. But it is a lot easier than you might expect. And there are lots of people who are always happy to help at charge points, on the phone or online. And now, obviously, uh, charging your electric car is going to be as important as filling up at a, at a petrol station for conventional cars. But your options of where you can charge it, where you can fuel up, are hugely increased. Something I find really interesting is that 71% of cars in England are parked on a driveway or are garaged overnight. So owners can wake up fully charged every single day. And for those who don't, there are lots of locations where you can top up. Uh, you can think of these like a new breed of petrol stations at work, at the shops, um, other venues, and even on motorways too. And with the, now with the lots and lots of new electric vehicles with 200 or 300 mile ranges, yeah. There's now a lot of people who are using their cars for high mileage work and they are, you know, some of them are managing to do that without driveway, so it is possible. So let's look at all of this in a little bit more detail, starting with home charging. How does home charging work in practice? Well, I mean, when you decide you're going to get an electric car and if you have a driveway, it makes sense to get an, a, a specific electric car charger installed. It doesn't have to be inside. It can be outside on an exterior wall. Uh, I mean, it's possible, as you and I have both done, to charge a car using a three pin plug like you plug your kettle into. It just takes just a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's far more convenient and much faster to get the right equipment. So if this option is available to you, is this something that is expensive? Is it complicated? I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward to, to wire and it needs a professional electrician to do it. But uh, and in the UK, there is a grant available uh, to drivers uh, yeah. to have that have that unit installed. And, and interestingly, lease plan, the customers can even get a home charger installed as part of the car lease. So you're paying for it, in, it within the car lease, right. which spreads the cost of it. Which is really good. I know from personal experience that charging from home is a real luxury. But what surprised me is that while electric car drivers could charge every night if they wanted to, on average, most will only do so maybe twice a week. And I know that I definitely fit into that category. Absolutely, yeah. And if you charge it uh, you know, after midnight, you know, and there's timers on the car, so you can plug the car in, it doesn't charge till midnight, then electricity at that time is typically a lot cheaper and it's typically a lot cleaner, which is really good. And there are lots of really interesting renewable tariffs, so you can be assured you're charging off the cleanest and cheapest energy available. Which is brilliant. But if you aren't lucky enough to have a driveway or a garage, what are the options? Well, this this is getting easier every day because there's yeah. no question it is harder if you don't if you can't park a car off the street. But according to ZapMap, four thousand public chargers were installed last year alone in 2020. It's so that's on top of all of the others. On, on top of the ones that are already there, and that's an, a, an average of one every couple of hours. So there's really a lot of them going in. There's also thousands of on-street uh, charge points being rolled out. So there are some that you know in residential areas. So there's there's some that will pop up out of the curb. So they're flat when they're not in use. They're not cluttering the streets, but they can yeah. come up. We've, we've filmed some of those fully charged. And then the ones that are in lampposts. So an existing piece of street furniture has now got a socket in it and you can charge your car off that. And those are, I've used those. They are much easier to use than I expected. So there are alternatives for drivers without their own parking space. Mm -hmm. Away from home, I can just see that more charges are appearing at shops, pubs, leisure centres, car parks. But what about petrol stations, the place we are all already familiar with going to fuel up a vehicle. Well, that's the, I think, a good thing because most major retailers are adding charging charges, rapid charges to their existing sites. And that's becoming more and more common. And it is a thing when you're driving around in an area you don't know and you see a garage, we all know, oh, I can get fuel there. And if you can get electricity there as well, 
and you don't know anywhere else to go. It's easy to find, they're well lit, there's staff on duty there that can help if you need it. That's th those things. So there's more of those appearing. And the, I think the big change that's coming now, and there's many of them being built all around the country, is big charging hubs. So effectively exactly the same as a big well, get a petrol station, except it's only electric, it's undercover, there's lots of charges and there's staff on site. Mm, which is really, really reassuring. But also having lots of these sort of, uh, you know, smaller local options is encouraging too. But what if I wanted to go on a longer journey using a motorway? Well, yeah, that used to be <laughs> traditionally for electric car drivers. <laughs> that was the challenge. That was when we were, yeah. we, we, we were yeah. heading out west the early adopters. Yeah. Uh, so most all service stations now on motorways have chargers, but right. we know from quite painful experience they not haven't been 100% reliable. But the units, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not they're not particularly you know, they're quite dated technology. But the big important thing is they are all being replaced at the moment. And I've yeah. been to a couple of the big service stations that have got the new ones in and they are amazing and so much more reliable, so much easier to use. And then, you know, it's hard not to compare that with the Tesla network of superchargers, which is yeah. amazingly, you know, all over the world, effectively, if you look at it, yeah. an incredible number of chargers and they're really reliable. So you just plug the car and it charges and, you, and you pay for it through the car, which is kind of what yeah. we all hope we'll get to. So there are some excellent private operators now that have risen to this challenge new chargers are springing up close to major routes and the electric highway which is the original chargers on motorways are being brought up to date as i said so that is really really good in the next yeah. 12 months we're going to see literally thousands of new chargers yeah. being installed so really just like robert said it wasn't flawless it isn't flawless but it's really great to hear that it is being fixed so now we're going to talk to an electric driver and get their take on the charging experience. So I've had an electric car for eight years now. So I suppose you might call me a bit of an early adopter. Um, I started with a Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour, which had a relatively re small range of about 80 miles. Um, and I've, um, since I'm actually onto my third um, electric car now, um, all three have in fact been Nissan Leafs. Okay, what I can tell you about charging from home. So people often uh, hear online, they say, ah, but if I go to the petrol station, I plug in my pump, I'm away in five and 10 minutes, fully, fully loaded with fuel. Okay. But look at it this way, I get home um, and I plug in my charger, that takes me five seconds, and in, okay? I get up in the morning, I take it out, it's like charging my, my iPhone. I've spent maybe 10 seconds, and I'm leaving each day with the equivalent of a full tank of electrons. So it is not a slow problem charging at home, it's easy. Okay. And okay, not everyone is gonna have the option of charging at home. If you're living in a block of flats, or if you're, I mean, your landlord won't let you put one in the car park, okay, that is gonna be slightly more difficult than if you have a home charger, but I know lots of people that manage just fine. Remember, nobody at home has got a petrol pump, okay? So people manage without having uh, fueling at home. Now, I've also got um, another advantage with my home charging situation, which is not typical. I've got something called vehicle to grid, and I think that's something you're gonna hear more and more about. Now, vehicle to grid means as it sounds, I can plug the car into my house. Um, and it not only can charge the car, but it can also, the car can charge the house. Um, now, at the moment, the only cars that can do this are the Nissan Leafs. And that's probably one of my reasons I chose this particular car. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to do this as part of an early trial from one of the um, electricity companies who provided me this system. And uh, it means I plug in my car when I get home, so that's in the middle of peak when everyone's plugging in their uh, electric appliances, their kettle, they're putting on their electric oven. And my car notices that there's demand and actually powers the house. And then when everyone's settled in bed, okay, and when the grid has got more than enough electricity from all those wind turbines going around, okay, that is when the car then automatically starts drawing that power back. So what it means is by using a vehicle to grid system, I can use this car to even out the peaks in the grid. So people always say that electric cars are gonna be 
hard on the grid, actually this is one way in which they can actually be helping the grid. So to think about charging away from home, uh, what I would say is there are lots of options and I think the way you approach charging away from home is different from the mentality of a petrol um, driver. So let me, if you're a petrol driver, you're going to go fill the car up full, you're going to drive it down, down, down to the very end, and then you're going to go to a petrol station and fill up. And that's the normal way we've always been programmed to do it. Once you get an electric car, your mentality changes to some degree. Um, there are lots of chargers around uh, all over the place. You'll see uh, seven kilowatt chargers, which will charge a car like this in maybe four or five hours. You'll see them up for free in supermarkets, at cinemas, at the sides of roads, and a lot of them are free. What you end up developing is a mentality of what we call grazing. Now, grazing charging means you're not looking to fill up your car to full. But what you are looking to do is to make most of those opportunities when your car is sitting there doing nothing. And let's face it, most of the time, 90% of the time, our cars are just sitting there like this, doing nothing. Well, why not make use of that? So if you go and do a shopping trip and you're going walking around the shops for an hour, if you plug into a public seven kilowatt charger, you get back, you maybe put a third back on your tank. The other type of charging away from the home is what we call rapid chargers. And those are much faster. So by comparison, if a seven kilowatt charger might be in your supermarket, a rapid charge is 50 up to 150. And even some new ones, which are a blistering 350 kilowatts. So a rapid charger like that could charge a car like this from say 10% up to about 80% in something like 30 or 40 minutes. So can the different types of uh, charging cables be confusing? Well, I think it's useful to talk about what cables you will deal with as a new EV driver. Um, the two basic cables which you'll keep in your boot are a cable that allows you to plug into a free pin plug. Uh, these are affectionately known as granny cables in the EV community um, because it's where you go when you want to plug in at your grannies. Um, those would run about three kilowatts um, and those usually be kept in your boot. And then you'll have something called uh, a type two cable and those are ones which will plug to seven kilowatt chargers. So these are the sort of small posts that you might see in your local uh, Tesco's or in the library or whatever. Then you've got the rapid chargers, the one you're gonna use on your long trip. Now you don't need a cable in the car for those. Those will come with tethered cables. So you're gonna reach off the charger and plug that into your car. I would say it's a good time to become an EV driver now. When I started as an EV driver, it was probably a lo little bit more uh, challenging, shall we say. Um, there are a lot more rapid chargers up and down the country now and they're getting a lot better and a lot easier to use. Uh, when I first started uh, driving an electric car, as I see, I had a car with a lower range and I really had to think where was that next rapid charger and sometimes the gaps along the major highways, some of them were a bit too big. There were a lot more bare areas um, when you were traveling around the country. To be honest, it's a lot easier now. In fact, I would say the challenge has gone out of it. That really resonates with me. If you have an iPhone, you're not going to spend your time worrying about how you use a Galaxy or vice versa. And actually, you know, the whole plugging in process is pretty easy. You can think of a Type 2 a little bit like a USB port. You bring your own cable and you can just plug all sorts of stuff into it. But I can also testify that electric car drivers are really friendly. When I've gone up to charging, well, I'd like to say that when I go to a charging station, <laughs> I see someone else struggling. I will always go and help them yeah. and say it's not that hard. But actually, you learn very, very quickly when you do that. And, you know, if you do get into difficulty, there's normally someone around that can, can, uh, that yeah. can help. Or you can call, there's a number on the charger and you can ring them up and say, I don't know how to plug my car in. Yeah, there's always a number. Yeah. So, in short, it's probably not as complicated as you might be anticipating. And with more and more investment going into the charging networks, it is absolutely getting easier and easier yeah. too. I mean, it is a far cry for when I first drive, started driving an electric car a decade ago. Well, there was only one rapid charger in the whole country and that was behind a locked gate. So it was much harder to, to access. So for more helpful information about this, please join us again in the next episode. If you have been. Thank you for watching.